All right. Derech Hashem, we're on Chelek Beis, Parag Vav, Oz Gimel, 2, 6, 3. If you have the name and edition, page 306. And what we discussed last week, what we're just continuing with this week, this is uh, entitled Law and Order, Divine Intent. We are learning about the heavenly justice system. God knows everything. He could do it, and he could do everything. He knows that we're going to do a mitzvah before we do a mitzvah. He knows we're going to sin before we sin. He knows exactly why we sinned, what was compelling us in every single detail and aspect that applies to it. So God could just judge us very easily and mete out whatever reward or punishment we deserve to get. But rather, Hashem wanted to make, he made Hashem made a divine justice system with courts, lawyers, and judges. Now, we suggested from Chaim Freelander, now why did God do this? We really can... It's very difficult to know anything to the nth degree why God did something, but Rechaim Freelander suggests that now we know that there are certain uh, devices and, 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 and let's say, uh, uh, certain specific ways that Hashem meets out justice, and we know certain aspects of this justice system, we can use it to our benefit. And he gave the example of knowing that there is a din, there is a judgment on Rosh Hashanah. Since we know that the heavenly court meets on Rosh Hashanah, to judge people all over the world. So we have an advantage that we can repent before Rosh Hashanah and hopefully merit a divine judgment. So one, one, when we know the aspects and the inner mechanics of this heavenly justice system and how Hashem made it and how it operates, we can use it to our benefit. So that's what he suggests. So we're going to continue now and learn more about this uh, law and order of the skies. Nimsa Lefisharza, we find according to this uh, rule, according to this principle, like we said, just like we mentioned, that God knows everything, every aspect of whether we're going to sin, whether we're going to do a mitzvah, even though he knows it, even before we do it, he doesn't judge us based on that, but rather judges us using this justice system which he made. And he doesn't judge anybody until the ministers who are appointed to deal with it, that uh, they do what they're supposed to do. The ministers do what they're supposed to do. Vahainu, meaning, God appointed angels to be ministers on every aspect of the world. That's another question. Why did God make the world with angels and he didn't need them? Something I think we discussed in the past. shamala. The angels come to the heavenly court and they testify. And they say what they saw and according to their uh, perception, according to what they saw. And then the these aspects will come in justice. We already mentioned many times. Now, the reason that these angels are saying what happened regarding a specific individual, is not because God needs to know that knowledge. He says, like we mentioned many times, God knows everything already. So the angels are not informing God of anything that he didn't already know. God knows everything. But rather, just God decreed that this is how he wanted the divine justice system to operate. And through these mechanisms, that's how the world is guided truthfully. Okay. We see that uh, from inferences in the verses in the Torah and Tanakh, in the Bible, that this is uh, really hinted to, this is really uh, said. It says, Hashem descended down to see. So regarding Hashem coming down to judge, so he came down to see is hinting towards this to this concept of God's divine justice system. Obviously, we know, literally, God does not have a body. God did not descend to see. He knew everything. But it's referring to the procedures operating of this justice system. And the angels came to stand in front of him. The eyes of Hashem were scanning the whole world. And these are uh, the ones that Hashem sent to walk the earth. 
Vachirim Keila in many verses like this. Hakol Nemar al Darche Hanhaga Hazos. They were all set. All these verses are referring to this Hanhaga, these procedures which we're discussing. Kviyas Tarim Shesider, according to the way Hashem set it up. Vaosim Hamalachim Hamufkadim Lahashgiyah Hal Yanei Haolam Olaheid Aleim Yikru Enei Hashem. And those angels, which are in charge of watching what goes on in the world and to testify in court, they're called the Enei Hashem. They're called the eyes of Hashem. So when the verse is using here the term the eyes of Hashem. Obviously, it doesn't mean that God has eyes, God forbid. God does not have a physical body. But the eyes of Hashem refer to those angels which are appointed to observe what's going on in the world and there, there and after testify in court. And they reveal these matters in front of Hashem when they are in the, the, uh, the heavenly courts. Like they did regarding the builders of the uh, Migdal Bavel. Namar it says, Vayer Hashem Liros, Hashem descended down to see Vachin Kol Kiyotzibiz. So when the verse says in Bereshis that Hashem descended down descended down to, to, to look, to observe, that is referring to the heavenly court case that happened to punish the builders of the Tower of Babel. Okay. The Ulam. Sar Shitis Bonin Sha'ina Dimyun Ba'elan Yanim Imash Nasab Malchus Arts. He says, now, we keep making these comparisons to a heavenly court system like uh, uh, the, the court system we have on earth, and we're drawing certain comparisons, but he says we have to be careful when we're drawing the comparisons that they're not totally similar, it's not a total accurate comparison, but it, all we're doing is to tell us that there are certain procedures in place. Because in the uh, the earthly courts, it operates according to the way it's relevant for the earthly courts. Uh, and according to what the what people understand and what uh, abilities they have. And in, the, in the spiritual courts, in the heavenly courts, they operate according to their hasaga, their understanding. So he gives some examples in the bottom that in the heavenly courts, you don't need to cross-examine a witness to see if he's telling you the truth, right? You don't have to, like, cross-examine the angel, like, you know, where were you that night? Did he really sin? Uh, we heard you were at another angel singles event or something, and you couldn't have been there. You know, there's none of that going on over there. It's just an angel accurately testifying what happened. And we think we mentioned last week that in the heavenly court and the earthly courts, there could be mistakes, right? There could be a miscarriage of justice. Somebody could be found guilty that didn't deserve to be found guilty. That does not happen in the heavenly courts. All of the dinim all of the the, the the psukim, the rulings, they are all true and accurate. So when, when we keep making this comparison of the heavenly courts and the spiritual courts, it's just to tell us that just like down here we have certain procedures and rules, so too up there they have certain procedures and rules. But don't make the mistake. Don't, don't think that it's like working like exactly as it is down here. There is no, uh, you know, district attorney and they're not picking jurors and they're not... Uh, cross-examining uh, witnesses and there's no exciting conclusion in the last uh, three minutes of the episode like in uh, like in Law and Order. Okay. Dave, yes. a question for you. I, so there's no such thing as a defense system either then, right? So we don't need, we can't defend ourselves if we, uh, because he knows exactly what our thoughts and everything were. So it is what it is, right? So that he's going to discuss but, next, actually. There are defense attorneys and pros there is a prosecutor and a defense attorney. It seems like what they do are is... Are some of our that, like, Type? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. That's what's coming next. So the, 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 the prosecuting attorney, who is the Satan, will come and say every as every uh, tzad, every aspect of how this person is liable. You know, trying to find every negative thing that he you know that he did and why he really deserves to be punished. Whereas the defense attorney will be saying, no, it was an extenuating circumstance, he was really pressured, and he, you know, he, yeah, he did something wrong, but uh, he's been good before, and so it's not that they're, like, lying, they're all telling the truth, but one is, it seems like one is expressing the side that he should be liable, and the other is expressing the side that he should be, he or she should be uh, innocent, and you could have a... Yeah. One more question, I know this would be extreme, but if a person can do tshuva shleva, at, at, at some point in their life, or let's say at the end, just so like it happened, there was no opportunity for them to do an avera afterwards, and it was a real tshuva. And it, and if we believe that tshuva actually cleanses, so there'd be no such thing as a prosecutor, then, right? Because there's nothing to blame him for because he did tshuva on everything he did. Yeah, I would I would think so. If, if someone did full tshuva, it's like he never sinned. He's like totally, uh, totally. So there'd only so there'd just be positive things to say once he goes up there. I guess. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming that there's no sins, and therefore there's nothing to, you know, judge. I mean, I, I assume that there is a judgment everyone has at the end of their life, no matter what. And, you know, if, uh, you know, I, I, what I mean to say is that I assume, I, I'm assuming that a person after he goes to the Olam Emes, he will be evaluated. You know, it's not just like, are you guilty or innocent? You know, like, what is your Olam Haba? How much did you do? And then there's a Yom Adin when, after Tchias Amesim. So I imagine that, um, that that will happen. But like you're saying, if someone does a real tshuva, he's like totally clean. He's a tzaddik gummer, you know, a full, full, full tshuva. He has to really mean, he has to do real tshuva. And, you know, it's like he never sinned at all. So yeah, it's totally erased. Hashem. Okay, let's, uh, let's go a little further. That's which, uh, what you were just talking about. Vihine. Some some ha'adon baruchu. Oh, someone just asked a question. Oh, sorry. Oh. So someone's asking the quality. No, no, forget well, it. I was just adding on to that. You could go on. No, no. no. What, what do you? What do you? What do you want to say? You saying the quality versus the quantity of olam haba? But how much is the olam haba? I was thinking it's not just how much, but what type. So right? just because two people could not have sinned their whole life, it doesn't mean that they get the same olam haba. I mean, everyone sins, but. Doesn't mean they get the same Olam Haba. It has to do with the quality. Yeah, it has to do with how much. I mean, like the Ramchal says, he said in the beginning of Derek Shem, he says in Das Tfunos, that Olam Haba is what a person acquires for himself and how much Shlemus he gets. And the Olam Haba is a Devekas to Hashem. And more than that, it's really, I think he even writes in Das Tfunos, it's really hard for us to understand totally what that pleasure is. But it is the greatest pleasure to have a close relationship with Hashem, and that all depends on how much a person earned it. So you, obviously, everybody is different in how much they struggled and how much they accomplished. So everyone would be on a different level now. Whether you, just, I don't know if you would use the word quality or quantity, but yeah, everyone. It seems like everyone's going to have a different olam haba, and it's going to be exactly what that person earned during his uh, during his lifetime, his or her lifetime. Okay, vihine. Hashem makes a prosecuting attorney, and that is Satan. It says by him, Satan came amongst them. And his job is to uh, to be taiveya in court. To uh, that that he should get the uh, the judges to to judge. So he wants the prosecutor, he's always trying to take people to court, saying, this guy did something wrong, we have to punish him, we have to punish him for what he did. Because of Hashem's attribute of kindness, because of Hashem's kindness, So Hashem will not punish a person until the prosecuting attorney takes him to court. So a person could sin right away. Technically, he should be punished right away. Someone violates what God said, boom, lightning, you're done. That's not how it works. Hashem and his kindness waited. Nope. You did something wrong, we have a court date, let's wait to the court date, and then we'll see what happens. So you have time to do tshuva. You do tshuva, you're scot-free, right? It doesn't work here. If you get arrested and you have a court date and you're out on bail, the fact that you feel really, really bad about it and you promise never to do it again is not going to help you in a secular court. But if you do tshuva, you're good. The FLP... The court date is after death. No, no, even there's, there's, there's several uh, court dates that a person has, right? You know, Rosh Hashanah we mentioned was one. Now, it could be there's other th- things for particular sins that Hashem will decide, you know, it sounds like even without Rosh Hashanah, perhaps, it sounds like there's a certain, just from reading it here, it sounds like there are other times that a person can be punished for his sins. That's what it sounds like. Not 100% clear. That's what I believe he's saying. I don't, th- I don't think he's saying it's just limited to Rosh Hashanah and to other, uh, and to after a person dies. That's what I believe he's saying. Okay. Now, even though, like we mentioned, a person's sins are right in front of God, he knows everything. Hashem still made uh, certain procedures. Perush, Likitrugo, Shalak Mekatrig, that how he prosecutes, how the, the Satan prosecutes, Echia, Umasaya, how it will be, when it will be. Okay, any Masha Kasu Chachman is a Murrah, like the rabbi said, uh, like the rabbi say, oh, here, here's an example, right. Hasatan Mekatrig Bishasa Sakana, the Satan, he. Uh, prosecutes during a time of danger. If a person puts himself in a dangerous situation, let's say maybe he decides to go jumping out of an airplane, and it's a dangerous situation, so that's a time when the Satan says, oh, this guy thinks he's so holy that he can rely on a miracle to save his life? Well, 
he says we should examine his deeds and see if he's really such a holy person. So at that, per at that time, when a person puts himself in a dangerous situation, the prosecuting attorney, the satan, has permission to prosecute and to go after the person. I actually don't know accurately how safe skydiving is, but I imagine it's not the safest activity. Also what the rabbis say, there are three things that uh, uh, remind a person of his, uh, of his sins. It's in Brachos. And there's a lot of details about this. So we see there's other times, there's many times when the prosecutor could attack. Vulam. Let's finish the chapter here, the section. For all these rules of justice, and the general rules and the details, there are procedures put in place, as Hashem decreed, for the time of justice, and all the aspects of it. Like the rabbis say, in four periods the world is judged. Mishnah Rosh Hashanah, Masha Amru, it says, Melech Nichnas Tchiluludin, Mekame the Leifush Haran Af. It says that a king enters just enters to get judged first before the people, so that the uh, be, before before Hashem's divine uh, divine fury intensifies. Masha Amru Tvua Trei Dine Mizdana. That grain is judged two times. There's a difference. There's a difference when how it's judged before the decree and after the decree. Meaning, even after there's a, a psak on a person, even after there's a verdict, the person can still do tshuva and repent. There's a lot of details. He's bringing at the end with all these uh, mishnayos and gemaras that there are certain rules Hashem made, certain procedures uh, when a person's judged, how a person's judged. Right? If a person just sins, he's not going to get necessarily struck down right away, but he has to be prosecuted first. Now, however, whenever, whenever that happens, however that happens in, uh, in heaven, we also mentioned Rosh Hashanah. And like, like you mentioned, after a person passes away. And once we know how Hashem, and we said again that Hashem does not need this. He knows everything. There's no reason that he had, there's no, the angels are not testifying because Hashem is lacking in knowledge. Chas v'shalom. And, um, but rather these procedures Hashem were put in place and we suggested from Rechayim Freelander that the advantage is that once we know these procedures, we know that uh, if a person puts himself in danger that he's going to be judged. So a person will not put himself in danger because unless he really feels that he's a tzaddik and he has nothing to worry about. Or Rosh Hashanah is coming, so we know uh, to do tshuva and repent because we know there's a judgment coming up. And I assume that if you know more details of this justice system, there's more you can do to benefit yourself and perhaps the Mikubalim know more about it. Uh, but that that's where we'll uh, conclude for the day. Avram, you asked a, Avram asked a question. I'm not sure. Why, why Hassan and Kala need a Shomer? Is this the same reason? I just, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it's Could because, be. like, also, like, at a time of Simcha or something, then it's also the, the Satan is kind of like, oh, do you deserve that also, you know? It could and be. So, I, will to, I, will to, I will have to look it up. Okay. I'll have to look it up. Okay. All right. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming.